Hello, everybody. I'm Mrs. Burr from the Kimball Library, and we're here today to do another craft. And this one is an idea that I saw when I took a ride into Boston and went by the Boston Public Gardens. And there were the swan boats. And you can ride a swan boat and paddle around on the water. And this is what made me think of making one that we could enjoy at home. The swan boats have been there for over 100 years. So each time I see the boats, I think of this simple paper craft that we can make. It's a paper plate, a very inexpensive one, not very heavy, very light, and we just fold it in half to make the body. And then I take my hand and rub it down and try to smooth it as flat as I can on both sides to get some of the bumps out of it. But there it is. I have a plate. And next, we would need a swan's head and its long neck. And I've made one, and it looks like that. It's just from a piece of paper. And I've taken and cut, you need to draw it first with your pencil, just a big swoop around and then the long bill. Make sure that that neck is very long as you can. I just used, I just used a half of a piece of paper to do that. And see, it fits very easily right on there. Perfect size. And we cut that out and there we have our swan's neck and beak. Do you know that the beak has very, very rough edges so that he can dip his beak into the water and catch fish with it? He doesn't have teeth, but he has a sharp, sharp beak. And then on his body, who would believe that there are more than 25,000 feathers? My goodness, that would make so many blankets and pillows, wouldn't it? Of beautiful feathers. 25,000. I wouldn't want to count them myself. That's a lot of feathers. When we make our wings, we also use a half a piece of our paper plate, too. I fold it again, and then on the bottom, I just take a little bit of a rounded edge down at the bottom and just cut, make a little wave so that it looks a little bit like a sharp wing. That's all I did. I just cut a little bit about it with a sharp point. That will be his beautiful wing. And of course we need two wings, so I'll just cut that in half right down the middle, easy as pie. We have two wings. Then I'll smooth it out just a little bit so it will look pretty. Then I'll do this one too. Just around the edge. There we go. Now we have two wings that are just the same. And the sharp point and what we'll do then is to take our wings and put them right up on the folded paper plate. Make sure that the points are sticking up because he looks like he wants to take off, fly. They do fly and quite high too. And they weigh over 20 pounds. That's a lot. He is one of the biggest water birds there are. And they also go very fast. They can fly over 60 miles an hour if they want to. Then, after I've made my wings and my neck, I take the stapler gun and staple those wings in place. Staple the neck in place. And there we have it. A beautiful swan, ready for a boat ride. 
I have three books here that maybe you've read and maybe you haven't. This one is called The Trumpet of the Swan by E.B. White. Interesting, too, because the swan does make a trumpet sound. So that's a good book, a good title for the swan. This one is Swan Lake, and it's taken from an opera. A beautiful ballet was made, too. Ballerinas about princes and good and evil. A beautiful thing to see, Swan Lake. And then, this is a storybook, almost a fairy tale, by Hans Christian Andersen, and it's called The Ugly Duckling. That's because when the eggs are hatched, they are not very good looking. Almost he felt he was ugly. But as he grew, things changed. You might want to read and find out. The Ugly Duckling by Hans Christian Andersen. Well, that's all we have today. I hope you make a swan or perhaps go down to the Boston Public Garden and take a swan ride. Bye-bye. See you again soon.